how to prevent scoliosis from progressing. Scoliosis is the development of an unnatural spinal curvature. And the spinal curvature is sideways from the front. And a scoliotic curvature doesn't just bend, but it also twists. And this twist or this rotation makes it a three-dimensional condition. And that the rotation is always into the concavity of the scoliosis. Now, scoliosis, unfortunately, is a progressive condition. And as a progressive condition means that it is very nature to worsen over time. And scoliosis is an uncurable condition, but even though it's uncurable, it can be highly treated, particularly when it's, tr when it's detected early and also there's intervention or treatment associated with that detection. Now, in the majority of cases, we don't know why scoliosis develops. This is why it's incurable. The most common diagnosis is something called idiopathic scoliosis. And idiopathic scoliosis means there is no singular cause. But we do know that growth is the number one trigger that causes it to progress. So during growth phases, this is when curves have the greatest risk to progress rapidly. Children that have not reached skeletal maturity are at the greatest risk for rapid progression during this growth phase, and this is unpredictable. We can't say that this person is going to progress and this person's not. We believe somewhere between 5 and 20-ish percent or so of cases progress during growth. But once curves progress, the bigger the curve becomes, the more likely it is to continue to progress while they're growing. Now, scoliosis progression means that the size of the unnatural curve is increasing. The Cobb angle or curve size is increasing as this curve becomes bigger, which introduces a tremendous amount of uneven forces to the body. And with this al alongside this scoliosis progression, we know curves become stiffer as they become bigger, meaning the curve becomes more structural. And the more structural the scoliosis becomes, the less responsive it becomes to rigidity. This increased uh, spinal rigidity also makes leads to other things that affect the body, like certain flexibility points and for the ability to and ability for the patient to perform certain activities and exercises, which could affect treatment options. Also, as curves progress, um, they're more likely to cause more noticeable posture deviations. And in adults, it's more likely to cause pain. So Curve progression never leads to something that we want. It always causes effects that we don't want to have happen. So knowing this, we should be working in every, in all our aspects of scoliosis treatment is to stop progression and keep curves as slow as possible. Because as curves get bigger, they cause more problems. As curves get bigger, they cause lots of, uh, they're harder to treat. And as curves get bigger, we're never going to get the same reduction as we would get if we treated it when it was smaller. So when should scoliosis treatment start? And I recommend as close to the time of diagnosis, meaning only proactive treatment can work in terms of counteracting progression. Because as curves get bigger, they get bigger faster. As curves get bigger, they're more likely to cause more issues. So treating them early is the most proactive way of dealing with the effects of scoliosis. So treating them as, co as close to diagnosis ensures that treatment is going to be as effective as possible. The smaller the curve, the younger the patient typically means the better results, especially when it comes to corrective conservative treatment options. There's fewer limitations that can be achieved. As curves progress, these limitations become more significant. Traditional treatment options are typically involves nothing and typically cause watching and waiting. And it normally funnels patients towards the invasive spinal surgery because the curves eventually worsen, they eventually cause more problems, and as they worsen and cause more problems, options become less and less, limit, uh, become more and more limited, and they pretty much say, of course, well, you have a severe scoliosis, now they're recommending spinal fusion, where spinal fusion is a non-functional approach that fuses the spine and eliminates spinal motion to try to make the spine more aligned. So it sacrifices flexibility and movement and function for alignment where modern, corrective, conservative treatment options offer non-surgical treatment options that are trying to proactively reduce curves, preserving as much spinal function and flexibility and strength as possible while reducing the curve. So we're trying to achieve spinal reduction, but not at the expense of flexibility and function. 
Now we know scoliosis is a structural condition. So scoliosis must be impacted on a structural level to actually get the curve to reduce. Doing just general therapy, general exercises, general chiropractic care, um, general things normally done to help people heal from injuries and traumas don't produce a structural result on a patient's scoliosis. Therefore, we must develop scoliosis specific, or I like to call condition specific chiropractic care, therapy, rehabilitation, exercise, and corrective bracing to optimally push the spine into a straighter position using spinal biomechanics to get, spinal, uh, to get the spine to react into a better position and then strengthen and stabilize this new position so therefore the spine doesn't run a rebound back into its old position. This sequence, I like to call sequential rehabilitation, that's coordinated with this multimodal approach is really the, the, the secret in getting a great reduction in a conservative, correct approach. So the way we look at scoliosis, the way we stop scoliosis progression is really at treating curves early, acting proactively, not just hoping it doesn't worsen by watching and waiting because you're almost always guaranteed to see some progression. We just don't know how fast it's going to progress or how much it's going to progress, but as curves progress, they cause more problems and lead to more invasive treatment. So there's never a hundred percent guaranteed treatments are going to produce a result with a patient. But we know smaller curves are more likely to respond than bigger curves. And we know younger patients are more likely to respond than older patients. Even though we do treat older patients and we do treat severe curves, we get much better reductions with smaller, younger patients than we do with older and larger. So different treatment approaches are definitely considered when we deal with these bigger curves, but we always recommend a corrective chiropractic approach or a corrective conservative approach for treating scoliosis as close to the diagnosis as possible will produce the optimal results. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.